Okay, welcome everyone to my continuation of what is geometric topology. I'm about to wrap up geometric topology, so I should come back to the problems uh, from my first slide. And that's what I'm going to do over my first slides. And that's what I'm going to do. Um, I'm going to discuss the unknotting problem and a solution for the unknotting problem, which we can do by now. So um, there are many same kind of solutions if you want, solutions and quotation, uh, quotation marks. Um, but something we actually learned and something we can do, and I really want to mention because it's a really, really great story, a quite recent in some sense in the last 10 years uh, that become apparent. And it's really just this question, can we detect the unknot? It's a very simple question. Here's the unknot, um, but the unknot might have really, really complicated diagrams. And can, can we detect it if we have some kind of random not, knotty picture? Uh, this is a really bad not, knotty picture, but let, let's assume <laughs> I would have drawn the crossings correctly. Kind of a very complicated knot picture. Can we tell whether it's the unknot or not? That's the unknotting problem. And yeah, so it was one of my uh, first problems I had on uh, in the first video. And it's really, really important. It's one of the most important problems in knot theory and therefore in geometric topology. And it's a very simple question. So uh, a second knot is just a torus. And can you tell two different embeddings of the torus apart? So obviously those two are not the same. Um, but in general, if you have some very complicated looking knot here, there might be some really crazy moves. So if you want to pause the video and go through those moves to unknot it to an unknot. So this knot here has, is actually the unknot, although you really can't tell by looking at it, or at least I can't tell by looking at it. And the problem is, can we decide? So if, uh, you give me uh, a knot and you ask me, is this the unknot? And I would not like need like to decide and tell you yes or no with 100% certainty. Can I do that in some way? Is that so easy? If you think about it just from the outset, um, it's not so no, not so trivial because there could be some really crazy type of randomizer moves, which even make the diagram more complicated until uh, it gets simpler. So it's not so easy to do this. It's really a crucial uh, question. and. It's, from the outset, it's not so easy. And most not invariants, as we've seen it, kind of fail to solve this problem. They're not strong enough. There's always some knot which has the same invariant as the unknot, but it's not the unknot. So we can't use that. And I will today I will show you um, at least some way to solve this problem uh, in, a certain, in a certain type of form. In the sense that you give me the knot, I run my machinery, well, my machinery, the machinery, and I will get a yes or no answer. And that's what I give you. I give you the yes or no answer. So an algorithm, if you want. And this problem is really, really, really difficult. So here's another picture, a really crazy one, one of my favorite ones of the unknot. And it's, it's actually, I mean, this looks terribly knotted. Honestly, my brain thinks this is knotted. It's not. It's just what people call a demon. It's a diagram of the unknot where you can't apply any simplification moves. Right? You need to make it more complicated before you can simplify it to the unknot. So eventually you can simplify it to the unknot, but you need to make it more complicated first um, in order to simplify it. And one of the problems or beautiful theorems here is that there are infinitely many of those. So for any number of crossings, essentially you will find a demon which more with more crossings. And whether a diagram is then the unknot or not is, is really supposed to be a terribly hard question because you have this funny uh, unknot diagrams, which really doesn't look, don't look like unknots at all. They are, but they don't look like it at all. So it's really the unknotting problem, deciding whether a knot diagram is the unknot is terribly hard. And that we can do it is really a, a huge breakthrough and only became apparent. And then some ways to do it, I only show you one, but uh, most of the ways to do it just really became apparent in very, very recent mathematics discoveries. And I show you one which you can understand together because we had the videos. Uh, can understand together would imply that I remember my own videos, which is already very questionable, um, and you would have seen the videos, which is probably also very questionable. But anyway, uh, that's also a point. In, in principle, we can do it from what we know, which is kind of a cool, really cool statement, I think, to essentially end the series on um, geometric topology. I will have some application videos in the following, um, but this is kind of the last 
mass type thing if you want we'll see we'll see anyway so remember that there was this fantastic polynomial which is called the jones polynomial or i think i called it the bracket polynomial at one point um and it's just given by very very simple rules which i won't recall but i just put them on the slide doesn't matter some really really simple rules that if you apply to a diagram you get a polynomial and it was such a powerful and beautiful invention. So it, it is one of these back of the envelope calculations that you can do. And it, it is so powerful as a not invariant. Um, it's really, really great. So uh, Jones, here's the picture from 1990. Uh, this one here is Jones. I uh, got the Fields Medal, the highest prize in mathematics for this discovery. And it, it's, it's ridiculous. It's really, really fantastic. And it's so ridiculously powerful that people conjectured very early on conjecture is still open, that the Jones polynomial actually can detect the unknot, which would be a fantastic result. So Jones polynomial of unknot equals, as uh, some not equals Jones polynomial of unknot, and by not, I mean not diagram, if and only if not equals unknot, which is a ridiculously powerful statement. The kind of slight catch here is that this is still a conjecture. So, um, yeah. <laughs> so if it would be true, you have a back on the envelope calculation method to prove, uh, to, to decide the unknotting problem. It, it still grows exponentially. That's what I, what I should, probably should say here. Uh, but it's not so bad anyway. So for small knots, you could certainly do it. And the computer also can uh, do it relatively efficiently. And for large classes of knots, you can actually cheat and it's much, much faster. So this is absolutely fantastic. You have this Jones polynomial invariant, which is easy to, enough for me to make a video or did a video about it. Um, and it's good enough to get you a Fields Medal. And it's essentially good enough to decide the unknotting problem. It's still a conjecture. So it's probably true, but we can't prove it. But turns out that in the recent years, there was the breakthrough that maybe the Jones polynomial that doesn't detect the unknot, or we don't know, but it's categorification, the Kovanov homology that we had in one of the videos as well. This one actually detects the unknot, and we can prove that. So again, uh, same type of formula here. Kovanov of not is Kovanov of unknot, even only if not is unknot. And again, I mean not diagrams here. Fantastic. Um, it's a bit hard, harder to compute than the Jones polynomial itself. It's kind of the categorification, the richer version of it, um, but it's still reasonably easy. So I could use Mathematica to do it, for example. And this really solves the unknotting problem. So if you throw at me a knot diagram, I just run Hovana homology. And if it's not trivial, so here's a, this is a statement, if the dimension of this homology is bigger than two, uh, then the knot is not trivial. So I just compute it. I just compute it, and I'm not. Really, really simple. So Kovanov homology is an unknot detector, which is this fantastic slide that I uh, stole from the Cronenberg Mof Mofka ICM talk 2018. A ridiculously beautiful talk. So um, just Google it, you will find it. It's a beautiful video. It's a beautiful talk, very watchable. It's absolutely great. So um, usually ICM talks, plenary talks are well questionable in quality, which it's kind of I don't want to point fingers. It's kind of part of the game because mathematics nowadays is really complicated and it's not easy to explain it properly. But this talk is really a jewel. Uh, it's beautiful. I, I highly recommend it. Anyway, so they explain actually how to prove or kind of in the talk way, explain how to prove uh, this theorem, which is a ridiculously great theorem and solves the unlocking problem for you. So Kovana for Morris, you detect the unlock. Very, very fantastic. And people jumped on this and then showed Kovana homology detects a trefoil. So you can also decide whether or not it's a trefoil. And there are some other families of knots where you can do this, which is ridiculous because Kovana homology is in the end a computable invariant. So really, really beautiful. And the question is somehow, why does JP fail, the Jones polynomial, where Kovana homology KH is successful? And that's a bit hard, and it's hard to explain. It's more like philosophy of mathematics, if you want. Um, but if you think about something like some, one of those very famous conjectures, this one here, um, about numbers, uh, just Google it if you don't know what it is. It's not so important. Just think of any number theoretical, kind of baby number theoretical problem. You can come up with your own problem. You can conjecture something. And it's kind of reasonable to expect that nobody will be able to prove it. And the problem is that it's probably still true. So the Collard conjecture is almost 
certainly true, but there's not enough structure to prove it. It's kind of too much combinatorics, too much basic combinatorics, and it kind of gets out of hand and you don't have enough tools to prove it if you want. And that's exactly what happens for the Jones polynomial as well. It probably detects the unknot. It probably can solve the problem for you, but there's not enough structure to do it. It's too simple in some sense. And Corona homology does the job because Corona homology is richer. There's a lot of structure. There are vector spaces around. There's linear algebra around and all that fun stuff. So Corona homology can do the trick because it's more complicated. You can prove something about it. It's kind of the whole point. That sounds a bit strange, but that's sometimes very often the case in mathematics. Sometimes it's very often the case. <laughs> very fantastic. It's very often the case in mathematics that actually something more complicated is not really more complicated um, because you can now use tools that have been studied for ages to attack the problem. And here is really the same. So any type of conjecture you know from basic number theory, uh, it's very, very hard to prove usually, if ever being proven. And problem is there's somehow not enough structure uh, around. And the same kind of story between the Jones polynomial and Hovana homology. Anyway, so uh, Hovana homology is really, really fantastic. Detects the unknot. It's an algorithmic way to detect the unknot. So I said again, if you throw a knot diagram at me, I could compute Kovana homology and can tell you the answer, is this an unknot or not? And it's actually so simple that it works the other way around as well. I could throw something at you as well. And it, it, it is, it's really, really great. So Mathematica, for example, uh, has a built-in, if you load the uh, package not theory, has a built-in way to compute Kovana homology. And you can just decide algorithmically whether or not to see unknot. Anyway, I hope you enjoyed this video and I also hope to see you next time.